you don't tell the universe, you know, when you're supposed to get a certain type of result or when you're supposed to make a million dollars or when your first sale is gonna come through, right? You don't know how much effort it's gonna take and if you aren't to that place yet, then you haven't put enough effort in. back to our first question on relationships over transactions and I know within the Long Island and Manhattan area there's what eight million people there right. and there's 40,000 agents you say about yep. okay so I mean step number one is the fact that you know um, nobody's stopping you from calling all eight thousand eight million people and just seeing how they're doing and see if there's something you can do to help them today um, you know might they have an agent that they deal with sure whatever but you know business comes down to filtering through the population to find the people that do want to do business with you and some are some will and some won't why won't they well for a lot of different reasons why will they well for a lot of different reasons you know that's really kind of like the small print that really doesn't even matter right if we're not doing our job which is to filter through the population at a very high rate then we're not doing our job if we're just sitting on four people that might do something and we're not trying to find more people that might do something with us soon um, and continuing to try to build our database and do what we need to do to you know build a large business I mean look a large business is <clears throat> based on how much data you have, <clears throat> you know, of people within your market. Um, you know, Google, Zillow, <clears throat> Facebook, Amazon, all these companies, their, their drug of choice is data. All right, they're spending billions of dollars, billions of dollars on just data, just data. Because they know they can take that data and turn around and continue to build their brand with the people that, you know, that data, and they can do it in certain ways and certain forms and fashions. Um, that can benefit the profitability um, and the revenue of their company. Um, real estate agents need to think of their business in the same, um, you know, fashion, just on a smaller scale. I mean, um, you know, like you got eight million people there. Um, you know, if if you know if they don't all know who, who you are and what you do, and that you're here to help, your job's not finished. Um, it's a, you can't. It's like drinking from the ocean. It's like trying to drink the entire, you know. Atlantic Pacific Ocean that you it'll never happen right you could work 24 hours seven days a week you'll never talk to all 8 million people that are in your marketplace uh, never happen okay take a take a market that has 20,000 property owners um, you know call all 20,000 of them right let's see how long it takes you know and then as you call those 20,000 people and you get to the end of the list, guess what? Everybody changed their mind as if they wanted to buy or sell something five minutes after you called them. So it's time to call them back again and see if they're still in the same boat. You'll have so much business happening, you, you probably won't even have to make calls anymore. You'll have so much going on, you won't have time to make calls. You'll be closing so many deals. You don't tell the universe, you know, when you're supposed to get a certain type of result or when you're supposed to make a million dollars or when your first sale is going to come through, right? You don't know how much effort it's going to take. And if you aren't to that place yet, then you haven't put enough effort in. You haven't got there yet. And so it's time to put more effort in, regardless if you think that you should have got this kind of result or you should be at this level of success already. You know, we don't care what you think about where you should be, right? You know, the, the, the numbers don't lie, you know, for how much effort you put in, how many hours you put in, how many people you've called, how many you know, pieces of content you've created you know, what you're doing on a consistent basis, what your routine looks like, what kind of appointments you've got set up, what your calendar looks like, right? Those numbers don't lie. And then if you if you are putting in the adequate amount of effort, right, then it just comes down to patience. It's only a matter of time if you're doing the right things before you start, you know, having the results you wanna have. And people, this has always been an age old, you know, problem is that, you know, this was true, you know, 20 years ago. I think it's maybe even more true now, but people just want it too soon. Um, you know, and they compare themselves to people like me that's been in the business for 20 years. I mean, at the last event I did in Dallas last week, a guy said, you know, how do you do all the, all so much stuff? You know, you're doing social, you got several businesses, you're still closing deals and all this stuff. And I was like, well, how long have you been in the business? He's like four years. I said, well, that's the difference. I've been doing this 20 years, right? I work 15 hours a day, 15, um, you know, 15 hours a day for 15 years. 
only solely on my real estate business to get to the point where it was a machine that I could just put very little effort to keep it going. Uh, then I took a step back and started to build other businesses. Then I stacked things on one at a time, you know, and gave enough time to really get some momentum in each area before moving to another area. And when you look at it today and you see everything stacked on top of each other and how it's just very little effort to keep it all going, right? Even though I'm like pushing as hard as I can all day long because I have so many things happening, it looks like I'm a wild Tasmanian devil when really I'm not, right? I've just been doing it for so long. It's just small, gradual increases every year, um, you know, that add up, you know? I mean, the whole name of the game is how do we keep the level of income we have and then add to it a little each year? You know, how do we retain that number of transactions? How do we, how do we create a scenario where you know, we don't have like a, you know, a 80 transaction year and then turn around and our next year we work just as hard or harder and we got a 55 transaction year. Um, you know, how do we do that? So that's always been, you know, the challenge is, is how do we continue? And, and the answer is, is, you know, continuing to work with the same level of intensity, right, as you did to get there. You know, and keep pushing like you didn't just make 750. Put keep pushing like you're still at 250, trying to get to 750. That's the secret, you know. Like the way that that I look at the real estate business is that I want to create actions that produce deals now and a large business later. All in the same, all in the same action. So when I'm calling property owners, see what I could do to help and build my brand with those people, whether they want to buy or sell or not today. Helping the ones who do, I'm actually closing deals now and I'm building this database up so that one day I don't have to really look for any business anymore, right? And as far as New York goes. You know, the agents in New York, if you're looking at how many transactions happened this year and you're dividing that by how many agents are in the in the uh, in the market, you're looking at the business completely wrong. You should be you should be like, you know, you should realize that you're way behind on the amount of property owners in the market that need to know who you are so that you can actually close like, you know, 50 to 100 deals next year. You should be everything you should be doing should be focused on next year and I promise you through those actions, you're going to close way more deals this year than you ever imagined. You know what I mean? It's like when you're doing the work, the results take care of themselves. Uh, we would get in these rooms and we call it a phone call festival um, where we just had fun. It was like three or four of us and we were just in there calling away and uh, we were laughing and stuff because, you know, they, the owners would say crazy stuff and we'd have really crazy comebacks and, you know, it was almost like prank calling, you know, if you will. And uh, we just had fun doing it, you know, and I think that's at the end of the day, a lot of people are scared to make calls, but when you ask them why, they tell you they don't know. You know, that's the number one answer I get. It's like, why are you scared? I don't know. Well, what are you scared of? Not sure. You know, and then deep down, it's like reject. They don't want to be rejected or whatever. I mean, I, I've yet to see an alligator jump out of a phone. I've yet to see anybody punch anybody in the mouth over calling someone. Um, you know, it's just, it. it's, I understand it to a certain degree. And I know, I know that like, I'm a lot different than most people, so I can't compare. Um, but I just don't get it, man. Whenever you, you, you know, would you rather mop floors and roof houses and, you know, flip burgers, you know, or just call property owners and make friends? It, In a sense. I've hung up on prospects, you know, yeah. I mean, I've hung up on prospects. It's, um, you know, I, I just, I just don't, really I just don't play that. You know, it just, it makes no sense to me why, why somebody's going to come sideways at me when I'm right. sitting here, you know, putting in an honest day of hard work you know, literally like doing everything I can do to reach out to the community to see what I can do to help them. Right. right? Um, and so whatever, if somebody has a misconception about, you know, getting, getting called and they think that only people that call are bad people or something, and that's their problem. Right. And that's their loss. But at the end of the day, your tone is going to solidify that moment you know, and a lot of times if you have the right tone and you talk to them like they're a friend or family member, you're going to turn that conversation around, right? You're going to end up making a friend and you're going to collect in that data and you're going to sell some properties, you know? So, I mean, my question to the people who don't make calls is what do you do? Let's go back to, you know, you can, you can buy your leads or whatever, but you're going to have to call them. You know, you're not doing any business unless you're calling somebody. So if you don't want to just 
pick property owners and call them or get expires or whatever and call them, that's fine. Show me what lead source you do use, right? And let's talk about how we're gonna get enough leads to stay on the phone for the adequate amount of hours you need to build your business. You're gonna have to be on the phone no matter how you slice it up. You know, and you can either you can either overpay for those leads or you can uh, you know, you can you can spend pennies to get the exact property owners you want to do business with. As far as follow up, man, if somebody wants to do something, I'm going to find out more about why they want to do it, when they want to do it, how they want to do it, and I'm going to put together a customized follow up game plan with them and how we're going to execute, set the expectations of when our next meeting is, so on and so forth. If it's somebody that just you know, it isn't interested in doing anything, you know, in the next five, 10 years or whatever, they're good for now. Weekly email, everybody goes into the weekly email database, right? And then that does all the heavy lifting for me. You need to be posting on every platform every day. Uh, you know, as a real estate agent, you should be posting on every platform every day. You know, there's no doubt, right? You need to be engaging with your followers and, you know, you need to be in the DMs, you need to be commenting and responding and stuff like that every day. Okay. What, what would you say are your uh, favorite online tools to make your life easier as an agent? Red X. Red X is number one, bro. You know, it's um, you know you can pick any subdivision, get all the property owners. You can um, you know get all the expired. You go back two or three years, and then they have a power dialer. You know, storm dialer. You can you know auto dial. You know those those numbers. You just stay on that auto dialer every day between nine and twelve. Call them property owners or whatever. You can upload your own leads and, and use the power dialer to call those. Whatever. You know that was like you know that to me that's like the pinnacle you know, technology for real estate agents, you know, like clients who, I don't know, like there was this one client, you know, she thought she was like the queen of the world, you know, and like you're supposed to bow down every single time you see her, whatever kind of deal, figuratively speaking. And um, it was just so wild, you know, the way she talked and like when she talked, you know, you're when you answer the phone, and you're going to talk for like two hours kind of deal. And then, you know, you know, it took so much to get to a contract, you know, and then it's just like, just sign the contract. She wanted to talk for like hours, you know what I mean? To sign the contract. And then through the deal, there were so many little twists and turns where, you know, she would get mad about the, the silliest, smallest things. And it really got kind of ugly, you know, and then it got to where, you know, she kind of wanted to back out. Um, it, it was a very wild deal if you knew this lady's personality and stuff. But listen, as a real estate agent, you're going to have some really wild deals. And you're going to have some really easy deals. You know, you're going to have some deals that just fall in your lap that are easy as pie. You know, and you got to take the good with the bad. You know, you're going to have those hard ones. And when you're going through those hard ones, just know you're going to get some, you know, because it's the universe, right? Because you have that really tough one, you know, you're going to get rewarded with some really easy ones pretty soon, you know? So I've never fired a client. I've never, you know, said I don't want to work with you or cut them loose or anything like that. Uh, I've had some really piss me off, but I just let it roll off my back. Uh, and I don't really too much worry about it. And I just get the deal done. You know, do I do a good job of following up after the after the deal with those clients? Not not really, <laughs> not really. You know, kind of disappear. Yeah, they kind of disappear. <laughs>